So I realized summer is over and that most of you aren't even thinking about sunscreen in the winter, or the fall, or the spring, but really you should because sun protection is just as important in the winter as it is in the summer. And there's kind of this myth that heat goes with sunburn and heat goes with the intensity of the sun's rays and none of that is actually true. Just because you can't feel the sun's rays doesn't mean that they're not there. And the snow, like when it's snowing outside, actually reflects 80% of the sun's rays. And so that 80% that's kind of bouncing back off the snow is still hitting you. The reason you don't usually get sunburn in the winter is, first of all, you're not spending like all of your time outside sun tanning. And second of all, you're wearing a lot more clothes in the winter than in the summer. Like, in the winter, you're not going to run around in a bikini and like swim trunks. Like, it just doesn't happen. So as you know, and as I will admit, I'm a little bit of a science nerd. A lot of bit of a science nerd. And this is going to be a little bit more sciencey than my usual video. But in the end, I think it really pays off because you're really going to understand sunscreen and the sun itself and like all the damage it can do to your skin and how to protect yourself from that. Any questions you have at the end of this, kind of ask them in the comments and I'll put a lot more information in the description with all like links and helpful websites to look at those too. So click on that before you post any questions in the comments. The sun produces three kinds of radiation. There's UVA, UVB, and one you probably haven't heard of called UVC. However, you can pretty much ignore the existence of UVC rays for the purpose of sunscreen because the Earth's ozone layer kind of protects us, protects, protects us from them even getting into the Earth's atmosphere, so they don't really exist in the world of sunscreen. So UVA and UVB rays differ in three major ways, being their wavelength, their frequency, and their energy. And I realize this is a little bit of physics, a little bit of chemistry, but you can get it. It's pretty simple. So if you look at this chart, and yes, I actually made a chart to show you guys this. You can see that the frequency up here is going to increase, and as you go down, the frequency is going to decrease. And the reason for that is, is the wavelength up here is obviously shorter. You have these little lines, and they're a lot closer together than as you go down. These lines get further and further and further apart. And also, it makes sense that as you go up a chart, the energy is going to increase. And intuitively, this kind of makes sense because as you get these waves that are really, really close together and moving really, 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 really fast, they obviously have more energy than waves that move a little bit slower and they're kind of more spread out and they're more chill. Like these waves that are crazy, like they have more energy. So as you go up the chart, these have more energy and down here it has less energy and they're slower. So it makes sense. UVB rays fall closer to the top of the spectrum. And the reason for that is they have a shorter wavelength and a little bit more energy than UVA rays have. So UVA rays, UVA rays would be a little bit lower in the ultraviolet radiation spectrum. UVB rays are the rays that give you sunburn. And the reason for that is since they have all this energy, they're going to cause a lot of immediate damage. And that's why your skin turned red in the sunburn. However, these UVA rays are actually just as damaging. UVA rays are actually the rays that are the main cause of cancer and um, aging and just general skin damage, uh, UVA, UVA rays do most of that damage. And UVA rays are, in a sense, the least damaging of the two rays, but it's only because they don't cause sunburn. They do cause all this other bad stuff to happen. And sunlight is actually a carcinogen. And what that means is it causes cancer. And as most of you probably know, it causes cancer. You stay on the sun too long, you get skin cancer, and that's melanoma, skin cancer, and that's bad. Bad. And what cancer is is basically a mutation of these skin cells. And sunlight is what's doing the mutating of these cells. So why would you want to sit in the sun and let your skin be changed and made into cancer? Like that's basically what you're doing. And it's not good. If you doesn't ring a bell, that's not good. And did you know that sun tanning is actually a cellular mutation to kind of protect your skin from further sun damage? And that's further sun damage, meaning that like tanning itself is mutating your cells. And that's scary. Like you think a tan is a good thing. Like I love being tan, but like after reading like all the stuff that I read to like give you this video, like I'm kind of scared to tan because tanning is actually like your cells are mutating. Like your cells are changing. They're not supposed to do that. And your, sun's, your skin's trying to protect itself from the sun by tanning, but tanning is bad. Like, it's bad, and like, I always have known that, but just cellular mutation, that's what causes cancer, that's what causes aging, that's what causes all this bad stuff to happen, and sun tanning is doing that to your skin. 
So yeah, all of you that believe in like those base tan things, like when you get a base tan and you can like suntan more and it's like good for your skin to get a base tan, yeah, maybe you should probably reconsider. Also, 99% of the rays that hit Earth are UVA rays. That means 1% of the sunlight hitting the Earth is UVB rays. And UVB rays are what cause sunburn. Not all the other terrible junk like cancer and that, those are, those, that's UVA rays. UVB rays, that little 1% of the UVB rays hitting Earth, that causes sunburn. So by the time that 1% of sunlight is burning your skin, think of how much of those UVA rays are already just attacking your body and it, mutating your cells. Like. And to put into perspective how damaging UV rays are, UV rays have been used for decades in processes like pasteurization and um, like processes using food to remove unwanted microorganisms and bacteria and molds and viruses and like think what that's doing to your skin like you're exposing your live living cells to sun that is used to kill things. It's used to kill bacteria and now you're killing your cells. It's bad. Sunlight's bad. I mean, there are a couple of benefits to actually having sunlight, and one of those, the one that's most well known, is your skin needs to be exposed to sun in order to produce vitamin D. But besides that, there's not really many benefits to going out in the sun. And your skin doesn't need that much sunlight to make vitamin D. You only need a little teeny bit, like you can get enough from going outside in the winter for your skin to make vitamin D, so you don't need to tan for your skin to make vitamin D. Um, but basically, it's not as bad. So, now that you know, and I've probably scared you a little bit about how much damage the sun can actually do, how can you protect yourself from it? Sunscreen. What the video is about, it's sunscreen. Um, or sunblock. What's the difference? Sunscreen, sunblock. Sunscreen is another name for a chemical filter, and a sunblock is another thing for a chemical block. What does that mean? A chemical blocker or a sunblock is what you see like in those old school like lifeguard movies and the lifeguards have like that white stuff on their nose that doesn't soak in. Those are the sunblocks. And basically what they do is they just kind of sit on the skin and they bounce back the light. They don't even let it enter your skin at all, they just kind of just make them bounce back right away. And some examples of those um, in chemical terms would be like uh, zinc, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. I have a list right here that you don't have to memorize. Like I, I couldn't do that. Um, and I'll put this, I'll put a link to this in the description so you can kind of see this yourself. Um, yeah, there's a couple of those. And, but most, for the most part, like all the sunscreens that I own and most of the ones that you guys are going to buy are going to be the ones that kind of soak into your skin. And those contain the chemical filters. Basically what that means is the sunscreen will kind of soak into your skin and, or they'll just make like a clear barrier on your skin. So then when the sunlight hits these chemicals, the chemicals will kind of take the negative effects of the sunlight on themselves. Um, so say this is a chemical blocker and you'll have the sunlight beating down and so it'll kind of like take it in and go like take it in and it's going to just take that sunlight and kind of just break it down and take it into itself. So it doesn't go into your actual skin cell. So it kind of like it's kind of like a like a big best friend. Like it kind of like takes the sunlight, so it doesn't hit you, and it's a little. I don't know how to go with that, but it, it takes the sunlight in, changes it so it doesn't hurt your skin. I would usually recommend using a chemical filter sunscreen, which is like most of the sunscreens on the market for most everyday use. Um, the only reason I would say to use um, one of the physical block the physical blockers or the sun blocks is if you have really really sensitive skin. Um, because if you're really sensitive skin, sometimes these chemicals soaking into your skin is just going to irritate it. And it probably is not going to be the prettiest thing to have like white on your nose, but I mean if your skin's really sensitive, you probably want to go with a sunblock over a sunscreen. And you also want to pay attention to when you're picking out a sunscreen is the SPF. What is SPF? SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. And basically for oversimplification purposes, SPF is a multiplication factor. So say that without sunscreen, your skin usually starts to burn in an hour. With a sunscreen with an SPF of 15, your skin will ideally start to burn in 15 hours. Again, um, kind of with that, with an SPF of 70, if your skin usually burns in an hour without sunscreen, with an SPF of 70, your skin will burn, again, ideally in 70 hours. However, that doesn't usually work exactly as planned. Um, because first of all, the sun isn't constant throughout the day, like sometimes you have um, more sun hitting than other times of the day and 
Also, as you're like sweating and you're going in the water, like sunscreen comes off, so it doesn't really work exactly as it's labeled. Also, there is no measuring factor for UVA rays. And again, just to review, the UVA rays are those rays that are cancer-causing but don't necessarily cause sunburn. And the reason there's no SPF measurement for that is because sun protection factor refers to the amount of time it takes to get a sunburn. And since UVA rays don't contribute to sunburn, there's no way of measuring how much these actually block for that. So again, the SPF is only measuring how much it blocks against UVB rays, but that's not saying that the sunscreen and sunblocks don't protect against UVA rays. And as you can see in this chart, again, I'm going to put a link to in the description, I have kind of a list of chemicals and what each of them blocks against. Like, I'll take, for example, my Aveeno Active Naturals uh, Sunblock Sunscreen Lotion. And the first ingredient is a ben Avabenzone. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. Avabenzone. If you look on here, Avabenzone protects against UVA 1. Um, UVA 1 rays basically contribute to like, it's, it's just like one section of the UVA spectrum. And then if you go to, I don't know, let's go to oxybenzone. Oxybenzone is another ingredient in here, and oxybenzone protects against UVB and UVA 2. So with those two ingredients, you're actually protecting against all of the entire UV spectrum, UVA 1, UVA 2, and UVB. So this is a really good sunscreen to get like the full... Um, spectrum block. It's really important to kind of go through the sunscreens that you own along with this list and really see what kind of protection you're actually getting from these sunscreens. And again, my, my recommendation for most of you would probably be the Aveeno Active Naturals because out of all the sunscreens I own, it's the only one that actually protects against all forms of um, sunlight. So this is a really good one. It's also really good for hypoallergenic skin. I have really sensitive skin and I can definitely handle this. Just don't get in your eyes because it will sting. Um, my second choice would probably be the Cetaphil um, with SPF 15. This doesn't protect against the entire spectrum, but most of it. But if you can't, your skin can't handle this, this is definitely the next best thing and a little more sensitive. Again, remember, even in the winter months, it's still important to wear sunscreen because although lobster tastes good, you don't want to end up looking like one. And if you have any more science topics you want me to cover, definitely post them in the comments and I'll get to them. Any questions you have or if anything I explain is a little bit confusing, um, ask them down below. But also check the FAQ in the description for a little more information. Thanks for watching and I hope this wasn't too sciencey for you. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!